in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Welcome to Islam for Dummies. Today we will be talking about the hijab or headscarf worn by Muslim women. First, we will examine the verse from which all Muslim scholars base the requirement of the headscarf. And tell the believing women to lower their gaze and be modest. This exact phrase is actually requested of men in the previous verse. So the purpose of the veil is clearly identified as observing modesty and avoiding the sexual glances of men. And to display of their adornment only that which is apparent. Imam al-Tabari explains. The strongest and most accurate view is that which says that the exclusion refers to the face and the lower part of the hands up to the wrist. So, to achieve modesty, Muslim women are told to cover their bodies with the exception of the face and hands. And to draw their veils over their bosoms. Ibn Kathir explains. Kumur, veils, is what is used to cover the head. In other words, Muslim women are told to wear the headscarf and be sure that it covers the chest as well. Second, we will examine the false claim that the hijab is oppressive to women. As we saw from verse 2431, the noble purpose of the hijab was stated as upholding the value of modesty and deterring the lustful gazes of men. Now let's listen to the false claim of the person IQ al Rasuli. This is a method to control Muhammad and Muslim women physically, intellectually, and spiritually, so as to have them totally subservient to the will of the men. For anyone to suggest that women dressing modestly is somehow oppressive is quite amusing. Especially because sexual objectification of women results when society pressures women to dress in a less modest manner. Whether worn by Muslim women, Christian nuns, or the Virgin Mary, modest dress liberates women from sexual objectification and empowers them to be treated on the basis of their intellect and personality. Now let's listen to Ahmed Didat's explanation. Why should they have to cover themselves um, because of the weakness of men? In America, in New York, no woman is safe after dark. No woman is safe in France. During daytime, women have been raped in the street and people just walk by. I said, you are inviting it. You know, the nuns, Roman Catholic Church, nobody gives them a second look. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, came along, you won't give her a second look. But my dear sisters, those women on your gold coast at Scarborough and all that with bikinis and tangas and G-strings, look. Sure. It's attracting look, even an old man like me, I tell you, my brother. If, if I went there, I tell you, I'll be burning inside. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, this is the nature of man. God made us like that. The Quran says, Fear in the sight of men is the love of things they covet. Number one, Min al nisa women. I'm still not in the market for a BMW, but I'm forced to read this advert with a woman in the scampi, skimpiest of bikini, what you call the tanga, you know the g-string. She, she's standing in front of the motor car and it's, it's written at the bottom, test drive her now. <laughs> this is your pleasure, your privilege. We have no right to force you. But we say, you are playing with fire, my child, and you're going to pay the price. You're paying the price now, and you will pay the price. Third, we will examine the false claim that Muslims only permit a woman's eyes to be seen. 
the vast majority of scholars from all four Islamic schools of thought agree that the requirement of the veil excludes the face and hands, citing verse 2431. Now let's listen to I.Q. al-Rasuli's false claim. Of verse 33.53, followers of Muhammad deliberately misinterpreted and or misrepresented it to mean that the female followers should be covered from head to toe with a garment from which only their eyes can be seen. By the stretch of his own imagination, it is only I.Q. al-Rasuli who construes verse 3353 to ordain the veil. So his following criticism applies only to himself. By no stretch of the imagination can any intelligent being construe that the verse implies or means to cover the body of the female. While there is a minority of Muslim scholars who concluded that the face must be covered from other verses and hadith using proper Islamic legislation methods, yet portraying the view of this group as if it is the view of all Muslims is clearly a disfiguration of the truth. Fourth, we will examine the false claim that the hijab is not ordained in the Quran. As we learned from verse 2431, kimah is the original term for headscarf, for which the contemporary term is hijab. Now let's listen to I.Q. al-Rasuli's false claim. The hijab is not in the Quran or in the hadiths as a total covering of the women of Muhammadan Islam. The hijab, originally called Kimah, is, in the Quran, and in the Hadith, as a total covering of the women of Islam, except for the face and hands. For someone who supposedly studied the Quran, intensely, for more than 23 years, in Arabic, his native language, I.Q. al-Rasuli's ignorance of the origin of the contemporary term hijab is quite remarkable. Even Wikipedia's entry on the hijab correctly states that kimah is the original term for the contemporary Muslim dictionary term of hijab, which means head cover and modest dress for women. A child can simply Google the words hijab Quran to see all of the Muslim sites quoting mainly verse 2431. Fifth, we will examine the false claim that Muslims are somehow forcing the hijab on non-Muslims. Unlike Christianity, where there is a punishment of shaving a woman's head for not wearing a veil when she is praying or prophesying, Islam prescribes no punishment whatsoever for a woman who chooses not to wear the veil. It's no wonder why the vast majority of Christians ignore this oppressive rule invented by Paul. In Islam, there is not one single verse or hadith that prescribes any method whatsoever to either force or punish any woman who does not wear a veil. As such, it is an individual's obligation to their conscience and not to civil law. Now let's listen to I.Q. al-Rasuli's false claim. What is being enforced upon the Europeans and other democracies today is a politicized form of hijab. On the contrary, Muslim women are fighting for their personal right to wear the hijab and the niqab or burqa in these countries. And attacking them for it is like trying to force Muslim women to discard the standards of modesty that they have chosen for themselves. In conclusion, since Islam ordains the hijab to respect women's modesty, it is hypocritical to attack it as being disrespectful or oppressive. Muslim women view the hijab and niqab as the highest levels of personal dignity, where only their husbands, sons, and brothers have the privilege to see their beauty.
Muslim women, nuns, and the Virgin Mary, wear the veil to be modest and avoid the lustful gazes of men. People like I.Q. al Rasuli would force them to unveil to satisfy his desires. Now let's hear his distress about their modesty. They want to cover the female followers of Muhammad, hundreds of millions of God's human creations. Islam gives God's creations the God-given right to choose for themselves how they define dignity and modesty. Those people insisting to take this right away from women should be ashamed of themselves. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islam for Dummies. And we hope to see you again next time.